Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I'm holding my camera right now. I didn't put it on the tripod yet, so that's why it's a little bit shaky. I am sewing like crazy. It's the night of the day that I showed you my fabric scraps, and I was anxious to get right into it. I took one of those drawers you see and I went through every scrap in that drawer and I have a big pile of what I'm calling the bigger pieces and then there's a bag of a littler pieces you know quite a bit in there they're good but they're little and I don't want to be working with tiny pieces right now so I'm working on that I have various blocks started but what I've been doing, and I thought I would show you, is I am picking out like the slinky or stretchy pieces and putting the fusing on that. I just want to show you the quick way that I'm doing that. And then uh, maybe I'll set up the camera at my sewing machine and sew with you guys for a little bit. So let me set this up on the tripod and I'll get started. I hope you'll be able to see enough. I think you will. Okay, this is... Um, a sleeve from a t-shirt that I used in an upcycled fashion and I'm going to put some of the fusing on this to stabilize it so I'm just going to cut what I can out of here let's open this baby up and sometimes I like to leave the hem on things and I put it over another piece of fabric and top stitch instead of doing it our traditional way of right sides together and then opening. So I won't take that off yet. Let's see, here's some fabric right there. Okay, I can use this piece to show you. And then I have some slinky stuff like this. Anything that's very slinky and just very lightweight, and a satin finish, anything stretchy, that all is going to have um, iron-on fusing. And I even have a big piece of this. It's just plain, but I like plain here and there. So what I do is I have this fusing. This is just, uh, it says lightweight, but I consider it more of a medium weight. But it's okay. And then I'm just going to cut a piece. Um, let's do lengthwise. Not too wide. I don't know. That's maybe like three inches. Like that. So I just have a strip. Glue side up. And you can feel it. This side is smooth. And this side is little bumpies. And then I'm going to just put my pieces on there. And some of this fabric, it's hard to see which is the right side, which is the wrong side, and I don't care. So I'm just going to cover the fusing. And I try not to waste, but I don't get overly worked up about it. Okay, is there a right and a wrong to this? It looks like it. Now, I'm just going to tip this a little bit because that other piece was slanted. So I'm going to do like that. And then, let's see, we have this nice, stretchy pretty blue. It even has like little glitters in it. So let's just line that up. I'm just trying to make it so that I'm covering as much of the fusing as I can. And it's okay if it overlaps a little bit. That'll just fall off as we trim. And then let's take this slinky piece. Let's end with that. All right, so let's go like this. Okay, so this is all covered now. So I'm just going to press... I don't think you need to have the steam, but for some reason I always have the steam. <laughs> I like steam. Now this particular fusing, it doesn't like it if I flip it over and try to press on the other side. So I'm just going to do this side. That should be good. I'm just going to cut between the fabrics. And now I can flip each piece. And I'm just going to trim so that... I'm taking off all excess fabric. Now this is like kind of too small and uh, this I can use again for this project if I want. But now I have a nice stable piece of this fabric. See it's not going to stretch. It's going to be very easy to sew. And it's still, you know, it's still lightweight enough. So I like that. Put that at my machine. 
Now this guy, there's going to be a lot of leftover. I'm just going to trim all around the fusing. I don't like to take a big piece of fabric and add fusing to that whole piece because I don't know how much I'm going to want of that. I don't want to waste all my fusing. So here's a nice piece now. This guy is going to be just a little piece, which is cool. Cool beans. This can go in the small piece bucket, and this can go in the trash bucket. And I'm reconsidering the whole trash bucket thing, and I have always saved those scraps forever because my intention is always to either make stuffed beds for animals or even stuffed toys. I never get around to doing it, but I'm going to try to find somebody who does do that and just give them all my tiny little scraps. Uh, I could do it, you know, by mail, but I'm telling you, fabric is expensive to ship. And, you know, some of you might say, oh, send it to me, I'll use them. But when I quote you the shipping rates, <laughs> you might be like, oh, keep them. Okay, so here's another piece. And then I have one more. But I'm sure I'll find somebody who can put it to good use. Now, let me just hit this again because I had a little piece of fabric under there. And let's trim this guy. Plenty left of that. And that too. So I have this. Now I can just start to put these together with other pieces. So let me pull some pieces and we'll go to the machine. Before I go to the machine, I want to make some strips. This is a sleeve, a leftover part of a sleeve. Once again, from one of my upcycled fashions. I would like to get back to those. I still have all the clothes that people sent me. And let's see, I'm not going to cut this in any particular fussy way. I guess I could save some of this, can't I? It gives me a couple pieces of scraps right there. This in the trash. All right, I can get some nice, a nice long strip here. I'm just going to fold that and cut this like this. I don't care if they're straight or anything. Now, this is actually going to be like a new series. I don't know how far it's going to go, but I'm calling it the crazy crumb quilt because we are crumb quilting, but since we're using all kinds of different fibers, uh, cotton, polyester, rayon, fake fur will be involved, stretchy things, um, that makes it the crazy part. So we're doing a crazy crumb quilt adventure. Now stuff like this, see I like to incorporate that sometimes. It's just it's just weird and so I'm not going to toss this. Things like, you know, the parts with buttons and stuff like that. So be sure you go watch uh, video number one of this. I'm going to have a playlist and if you really want a good series on crumb quilting. I have one. I believe there's 12 videos in it, and that is called The Crumb Quilt Adventure. And this one is going to be The Crazy Crumb Quilt Adventure. I think we're ready to go to the machine. I have a few other strips cut, and let's go. You guys, it has been so long, it feels like, since I've had you at my machine. I don't even remember how I used to set up, but that's okay. All right, let's start with one of those strips. For those of you who have watched the Crumb Quilt Adventure, this is going to be a lot of repeat, but, you know, I don't really remember what I've showed you. I know I've showed how, you know, do it, how to do it on strips like this, but that's okay. I'm just going to continue to do it. So let's just start. I take a piece of fabric. Let me back you up a little bit, maybe. Maybe. And I'm just going to take pieces of fabric and put them on here. Now we will be using some of the ones that I just created, but I liked this little guy right away. So I just put two straight edges together and we're going to sew right on there. Where's my petal? Where are you? There it is. And then I just stay right there. And now let's add this guy that we just made. Well, we didn't make it, but you know what I mean. We put the fusing on it. So again, just straight edge and just go right across. And I don't care what the shape is of this guy. Kind of too matchy-matchy, so we won't do that one. Oh, I like the polka dots very much. Put that down. 
And I broke my thread. Hang on. I was hoping it wasn't that my bobbin ran out. It didn't. Just got a snag in there somewhere. If I don't have any others wound. I'll have to do that. And I have some room left for another piece. So I want to stick something in there. That's too big. Let me see. Look, a little piece of flannel. I did keep some small pieces because I just really liked the prints. All right, let me make that just a little bit of a straighter edge. I'm gonna trim that like that. Nice straight edge. Fits perfectly right there. Oh, I love when that shit happens. Okay, I'm not going to move my camera again, but as a reminder, I'm just going to go to the iron and you can do it either way. You can do it, you know, with the pieces down and flip this back. This is um, probably the way I'll do it because some of these pieces are a little bit stiffer because of the fusing. So I'm just going to the ironing board. I'm going to do this. I'm going to press all this and then I will be right back. Now that I pressed this, I'm just going to start cutting them apart. I just don't feel like you can see what I'm doing. So let's just cut right here. And in between each one of these. And this guy too. And then you can, you know, trim now if you want. I, I generally trim like when I'm going to use it. For the sake of the video, I'll trim just to show you. You know, this is just the beginning of a block. Yes, I could trim right there, but I'll, I'll wait. And I like to start, you know, a bunch of blocks at once like that by doing it this way. And I don't care if they're really weird and crooked. I can add corners. I can do all kinds of things as we go. Now, this strip is kind of wide. This was, I think, my might have been my first upcycled fashion. I don't remember, but I made a skirt and a matching top, I think. I really like the big flowers, so I'm going to keep this pretty big. And I want my pieces kind of big because I want to, um, you know, be able to finish this, you know, this century. <laughs> It is fun to do, you know, all the little crumbs, but it can take a while. So let's see. What can I put on here? Let's see what I have started. All right. I have a piece like this that I did earlier, and I'm just going to put it, you know, so that it'll be like this. So I'm just going to go like this. Oh, I see I have a salvage there. I didn't notice that. So I'm going to trim this. Right, like that. So we don't have the holes of the salvage showing. Now I have a seam here. I'm actually going to just take that seam out. So now I need to find something that will fit right here. That doesn't quite fit. I like to not waste, but then I, I can really spend a lot of time trying not to waste. I'll probably be doing a lot of the sewing at night because it's just, I don't know, it's quiet and I feel like doing it at night. My mother's in bed and then I'll just upload the next day. So we'll be a day behind every now and then. Why am I having difficulty in finding something? Now this one is really sheer, but I absolutely want it. But I'm not going to put that white fusing because I think it's going to show through too much. I actually have some black fusing somewhere. And when I find that, oh, I think I see some scraps of it. I'll, I'll be using the black on this. I can show you when I do that part. Ooh, and here's some slinky that I'm going to like, but that also needs to have fusing. I just love the colors and the print. What did I make out of that? I think that, I know it's an upcycled fashion. It might have been, I don't remember which, what it was. Look, tie-dye. Oh my god, I'm so, I'm so excited. But this needs the fusing because it's stretchy. All right, I need to finish this. This is what we're here for. Oh, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I don't need that much of the peach color. Oh, we'll save that. And will that fit now? Now let's trim a little bit of this off, like that. Now it fits. 
Now without lifting this, I'm just going to pass the other piece. Where is it? Right here. I think I want this on here. Let's do it this way. And I'll be able to cut that corner off. I really don't concern myself at all as to what I'm putting together here. All right, I'm going to, well, I mean, only to the extent that I want it to kind of fit. Now, we're going to be wasting a little bit, but I'll use it somehow. Now, since I know I'll want to keep this scrap, I'm not going to sew across it. I'm just going to stop right there. Okay, so now I can snip these apart, and I'll go press, and I'll be right back. Like I said, I know that you guys, most of you have seen these steps, but not everyone. And see, I'm going to leave this as a nice big block because I do want some big. I also want, you know, stuff that looks little here and there. That's why I have some, you know, narrow strips and stuff. It's just going to be a wide variety, and I'm going to love it. Now, I'm going to trim this one along this angle. And I'll be able to make a corner piece just to make it as wonky as possible. Hopefully, whatever I end up making will end up on eBay. I can't keep it because I have no need and I'm trying very hard to just have things leave my house. <laughs> so then, you know, the drill. We start adding things together. Well, obviously I wouldn't put this there because it's got the same matchy-matchy. But I like to, you know, do a bunch of blocks like this that use the same fabric in each piece because that'll get spread out and then it just looks, you know, cohesive and you can see, oh, there's some of that there and some of that there. But then, like, you know, I have other blocks where I used a lot of this. You'll, you'll recognize this. I have a shirt that I wear all the time like this. And, and then, you know, I can start adding, you know, stuff like this here. And, you know, we just put it all together. I'm going to make, you know, some decent sized blocks and then I will figure out what to do with them. But I'll keep jumping in and showing you things as I go. I mainly wanted to show you how you can just uh, stabilize your fabric. Where is one that we just did? You know, you can stabilize your fabric and uh, so you can use all the knits and slinky stuff. And, you know, this was the slinky. Look, look at it. It goes nice with that. You probably think it doesn't, but it does, and it will when it's all put together. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back with more soon. Bye.